Hello, I'm Nick. Today I will show you how to build your first iOS app in just a few minutes using Cursor AI. It will be fun. Here is what you will need to create iOS app. MacBook or iMac. You need to install Xcode on your Mac. It's integrated development environment, IDE, for macOS. And Cursor AI. Cursor AI is a tool we use to generate code. First, let's create a project in Xcode. Navigate to the iOS tab and choose App. Click Next. We will need to give our app name. I will call it Stock Price. It will be a mobile app for monitoring stock prices. Organization identifier can be your domain name backwards. In my case, it will be Biz Babich. Click Next. Choose where to store the app. In my case, I will store it on a desktop. Once I click Create, Xcode will generate the app directory on the desktop. And now we see all the basic files for the project. Let's focus on the content view. This is our app's home screen. In the right side panel, we can see the preview of this screen. So far, it's a simple icon along with a Hello World text. Let's change the text to Hello Nick to ensure the Xcode is working and can build a project. You can see that the preview was updated. Our work in Xcode is done. Let's save the project. And now we can jump to the cursor. In Cursor, I will open my project. As you remember, it's located on a desktop. Select the entire directory and click Open. Cursor loads the project. And now you can see the environment in which we will work. This environment looks strangely familiar to anyone who has previously used VS Code. Basically, the Cursor AI interface is the interface of a software development studio with an extra layer of AI. We can hide and show panels. The left side panel is a project file tree. Bottom panel is a terminal. And the right side panel is the Cursor AI agent that we will use to generate code. This is the place where all magic will happen. Let's open the content view file to ensure that we are working on the same project. As you can see, the text Hello Nick is one that we modified in Xcode. So we're almost ready to start using AI agent. But before prompting AI agent, I want to navigate to the settings and make a few changes to make the most of the Cursor AI. Click on the gear icon at the top right corner and navigate to the models. Here you will see the models that Cursor will use to generate code. When you ask AI agent to generate code, it will trigger one of these models. As you can see, it will use both Anthropic Cloud or OpenAI GPT's models. Based on my experience, Cloud is better than GPT's at generating code. If you keep both Cloud and GPT enabled, the cursor will choose the right model for the job automatically. If you scroll down, you will see the section with API keys. If you have OpenAI or Azure API keys, you can provide them here, so you will be able to use your own models to get the job done. Now let's switch to the Rules tab. Here you can specify the rules that the cursor will follow when generating code. These rules can be user rules and per project rules. User rules are preferences, for example, the natural language you use to interact with AI. If you speak Portuguese, you can mention that you want Cursor to answer you in Portuguese. Try to avoid adding technical details in this section, such as programming languages you use or on some specific technical requirements that are relevant to a particular project you work on. Because user rules will apply to all projects that a Cursor will generate code for. It's better to use pair project rules for that. These are specific rules you want Cursor to follow when generating code for your project. As for me, I don't set pair project rules as a commands here. Instead, I use the Cursor rules file. And this is the last setting in this section. Ensure that the Cursor rules is enabled if you want to provide rules as a file. So let's create the Cursor rules file for this project. I will add the file to the top level of the project. And now is a question, what rules to specify? You can either write what you think is important to your project or use existing rules written by development community. In my case, I will navigate to the site cursor directory, type Swift in search box, choose Swift UI. Swift UI is the default language for iOS apps. I choose the second option. As you can see, the rules are instructions written in a natural language that give cursor a better idea about the things it needs to follow when generating code. Copy the rules and put them in a cursor rules file. Finally, I want to double check that our code base is synced with Xcode. To do that, I will navigate to the settings. 
Scroll down to the code base indexer and click Show Settings. If the indexing is enabled, it means that every time we make a change in the cursor, it will change the code base that we will see in the Xcode and vice versa. And also check the docs. In my case, I already added two important documents for my project. Swift development guidelines and UI do's and don'ts from Apple that I ask cursor to use when generating code. You can provide the docs as contextual information for AI agent along with your prompt. Simply click tag and choose docs. And as you can see, here are the two docs that I've added to the Cursor database, along with the option to add a new document. Let's tag both documents to the context by selecting them. We also have Content View in the context. But I don't want Cursor to focus primarily on the Content View file right now, so I will remove it from the context. And now Cursor will focus on the entire project, not individual file. It's time to generate our app. All you need to do is to write a good prompt. But this is by far the most challenging part of the process, because you need to clearly explain to AI what you want to build. I spent some time experimenting with different prompts and ended up with this one. It explains what screens the app will have and what content we will show on the screens. Before you ask, there is a low chance that you will generate a final app using a single prompt. So be ready to iterate. Let me copy and paste the prompt into the agent window and we can press send to ask AI to generate this code. As you can see, agent understands what we want to build and even mentions specific requirements such as MVVM architecture. This part about architecture is something that Cursor took not from our prompt but from the rules that we provided before in the Cursor rules file. Cursor starts to explain what it will create right now and start writing code. Create new and modify existing files. You can see that it added a new iOS model, stock, which will contain information about a particular stock object. Another file is a stock view model. Cursor added comments that explains that right now it uses dummy data and what you need to do next with this code to use actual real-time stock prices from sources like Bloomberg. Cursor adds stock list view, which is a screen with all stocks. This screen will be the home screen for our app. You can see that the cursor hasn't changed the current home view, content view. Now the cursor adds the stock details view. And finally, it updates the default home view, changing it from content view to stock list view, so that when the user launches the app, the first screen that they will see will be the stock list view. The cursor provides additional information, the rationale behind this code. At this point, cursor didn't make actual changes to the code base. We can review the changes one by one and either accept or reject them, or can click accept all to accept all changes altogether. I usually review changes one by one and accept them when I understand the reason. But for the purpose of this video, I will simply accept all changes to save time. Once I do that, Cursor will write actual files. And now we can navigate back to the Xcode to see how our app will look like. Click Views, select Stock List View. And this is exactly what we want to see. The navigation between screens works good as well. We can jump into Stock Details from the home screen. Yet we have one important artifact that we can remove, Content View, since we no longer need it. Let's get back to the cursor to do that. I will ask cursor to replace Content View with the Stock List View. The cursor checks the logic and confirms that the Stock List View has already replaced Content View and users will see list view when they interact with the product. Since we don't need the actual file, I want to remove it from the project without breaking the logic. Let's ask Cursor to do that. Cursor analyzes code and provides contextual action that will help us delete the file. Once we accept the recommendation, Cursor deletes the file. I will jump to the Xcode to confirm that we don't have it there and everything works fine without it. 
Now let's make our app a little bit more visually polished. Send a new prompt, asking the cursor to make the views look nice. I will accept all suggestions and jump to the Xcode to see the results. As you can see, the home screen looks a bit more visually polished now. And stock details screen looks much better than its previous version. Lastly, I want to highlight one important thing. Because you will iterate your code, I highly recommend using GitHub as a source of truth. The great thing about Cursor is that it allows you to publish changes to the GitHub in one click. Click Send to Git and choose Create Private Repository. That's all for now. Let me know what you think about the process of co-creation with the AI in the comments. Thank you.